Hello, gentle people, and welcome to another Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. Uh, I finally broke down and decided to get a brand new silicone mat for my table. Uh, the one you see here is gray, um, but it's kind of mucked up. And so, I now have this really pretty mint green mat to be working on. So I'm excited. Always excited when I have something when I have something new. All right. So, um again, if you are new to my channel, I hope that you will see something that inspires you for today's video. I was you know, I have, like I said, I have this brand new mat. You just saw me take it out of the box. And so I'm kind of rearranging and cleaning up my work area. And I came across these uh, tile, these ceramic coasters that I made a couple of years back when I first started doing this. And I mean, I worked with acrylic paint for almost a year. I tried my hand at alcohol inks. Whatever I saw on YouTube, I tried. And um, I have really settled into working with resin and my uh, color preference is uh, mica powder. But I did these uh, tile coasters using alcohol inks and this is my little collection of alcohol inks. I even had broke down and bought some mixatives. Um, you know, I was really trying to, to do this thing. I had uh, some pearl inks, um, whatever, whatever. The pinata, uh, white alcohol inks, black alcohol inks. I even went so far as to buy this Tim Holtz blower. When I first started watching people work with alcohol ink, they would use straws. And so they put their face down, they blow into the straw, and I thought, you know, you're getting all those fumes that close to your face, this is better. So, I, um, again, cleaning up my workspace, got my new mat, as you see. So I'm going to depart from resin today, and I have some tiles left over, found a box of tiles. So we're going to repeat this process and make a set of um, tile coasters using alcohol inks. And so, for our materials, so we have our hexagon shaped tiles. Uh, we need our alcohol ink colors. So I am going with the Ranger Alcohol Pearl. The Alchemy, which is a yellow, the Intrigue, which is a pink, and then a regular Ranger pink sherbet. And I have a silver mixative. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but I'm going to put it out here anyway. And then we're going to be using the blower. Instead of putting a straw down and me blowing into a straw, I'm going to use the blower. Um, this is a Tim Holtz blower. In addition to the alcohol inks, we are going to be using my 91% isopropyl alcohol. And then once these are colored, then we are going to seal them. Now, I'm giving you two options. 
you can seal these with the clear the what is it rust-oleum painters touch clear gloss varnish or you can do it the way I normally do it and that is to seal them in resin so that would be the Craftsmart Part A resin Craftsmart Part B hardener and I have this little squeeze bottle that I'm going to put this alcohol in. It's just easier to use from a smaller container than the large one. And of course, you need the nitrile gloves for the resin. You need a measuring cup. And you need a stir stick. And that's it. This is really, really um, very simple. Some When I first got started, I would see people doing this um, with no gloves on, and so I started out doing it with no gloves on, um, but alcohol ink stain. So it is advisable to wear gloves. And so the first thing we want to do is just take some alcohol and just wipe each of our tiles to make sure there are no oils. When you pick them up in your hands, you have oil in your skin, you get oil on these. No dust, no, you want them squeaky, squeaky clean. And again, this is 91% um, isopropyl alcohol. And I did not understand, you know, whether it made a difference or not, uh, the number on your alcohol, but it does. The higher the number, the less water there is in the alcohol. So, I mean, we don't use like 91 and 99% on our skin because it's really harsh and abrasive. But again, if you can get like a 91 to a 99%, that's what you should be using. And so this is really a simple process. I'm going to just shake these. This would be the equivalent of mixing resin on camera. Uh, so I'm going to stop the camera while I shake these. I want you to be able to see, let me see which one is clearer. You see in the bottom of this, let me get up and walk around again. I need a new camera set up. If you are looking, it looks like there's a white, looks like it's white in the bottom. That's the pearlescent. And so when you shake these, and these are like aerosol cans, They have a ball inside them. Now that white at the bottom is gone, so I'll give you a comparison. So you can see, see the white on the pink at the bottom here, but you don't see it on the orange. So let me go ahead and shake the pink. Might as well do it on camera so you can see. You still see that little bit of white at the bottom. Now it's just about gone. It's gone, so that's properly shaken. So let's get these others done. Now when you are doing this, um, there are a couple of ways to do it. I, when I first started, would watch people put alcohol on the tile and then add their color. I'd watch other people put the color on the tile and then add the alcohol. So I'm going to kind of do it both ways. So we're going to start here and we're just going to squeeze some alcohol onto here. And then I'm going to start with the yellow. And I'm going to add a couple of drops of yellow on here. And then let's do some of the Intrigue Pink. And these colors are just on here in random order. Uh, I don't really have a, a preference. I'm not putting them on here in any particular. This is the regular pink. And then let's add Let's add some of the orange pearl. 
and once the colors are on here, then I'm going to take the blower and start moving the ink around. And you can pick these up and tilt these. You can add more alcohol to them to spread this out to get whatever effect you're trying to go for. Uh, I'm not really going for an effect here, I guess. I think I want some more pink on here. And it's okay if it runs off the edges because I am going to be painting the edges. Oh, I didn't put that in my, in my materials, I'm sorry. And so the reason I've left this white on this side is because, ooh, I'm doing these for Mother's Day. And so I want to be able to leave a space to be able to add names. I've got a lot of white over here. Let's put some, some alcohol there. Got to fill that corner. And I don't like this corner over here, so we'll put a little few drops over there. And thin that out. That looks better. Now it looks more like design. All right, so that one's done. So now I'm going to do this one by just putting the drops on first. Oh, this dusk. So we're going to drop our alcohol. Inks on here. That's a lot of pink. going to move these just as they are. And you can immediately see that when you do it this way, the colors are much more saturated. So then if you want to thin the colors out some, then that's when you add the alcohol. And then we'll start to Especially along the edges, I like I like it light along the edges. Yeah, and I like doing this when I first tried it, but I j just didn't really. I don't know why this didn't hold my interest so much. I can't tell you why. Um, working with resin, I just found to be more satisfying. I don't like these streaks over here. Let's get rid of these streaks. And let's add a little more yellow. And again, I don't know if the camera is really capturing the way this moves, 
but this is really interesting to watch this move on this surface. I think I like this much better than that. I think I'm going to wash that off. Yeah, I don't think I like that one. I think I like it better just putting the um, just putting the alcohol ink directly on the tile. So we'll do this again. So I'm doing more of the orange. Yeah, so this way, if you want to personalize it, you can put a child's name on either in any of this white space. I'm going to wash that one off. Um, so let's do mostly yellow on this one. And you can see how it starts to spread. If this was resin, you would really get to see this stuff at work. But you can see that doing its thing. And so, yeah, I'm going to take this and wash this off before this dries, because I don't like that. And let's see, these streaks here still bother me. Let's see if we can do something with those streaks. Nothing like a finger for an eraser, huh? Yeah, so let me go um, wash this off. Okay, yeah, I like the saturation of those colors much better. So now, again, I like to go along the edge and just thin that out and run that color right off. Run that color right off the edge. And again, the beauty of this is because it is um, just alcohol ink, you can just wipe it off, or as I did, wash it off.
And again, I have seen people online do like really beautiful designs. Um, let's move that back that way. Okay, so that's it. That's all we're going to do with these. And we will let these dry overnight. And then tomorrow I will come back and um, I'll come back tomorrow and decide. I think I'm going to do resin. I think I'm going to do resin. Uh, the gloss is great if you're doing something quick, but I think the resin just gives it a, a much nicer shiny finish yeah I think I'm kind of satisfied with those okay so these um, have dried and so the question is what color do I use on the sides of these so I have these uh, glitter paint pens and I've used the pink one on that fourth one and then I have um, regular uh, permanent paint markers so I'm going to open this and I have a lot of pink a lot of orange and a lot of yellow so I'm going to pull out an orange a pink and a yellow and just put these on here and just do a test to see which color I like best. So we are going to start with this one. And actually, as I'm thinking about it, these don't all have to be the same color. <clears throat> that orange looks good against that. even though the paint ran over the, on the sides like I like it to do. Just for consistency's sake, I'm gonna go over. because I can't um, do the last side without getting paint all over my hands. So since I liked that, let's go ahead and let's just use these other colors.
I actually stopped doing ceramics. I stopped doing ceramic coasters uh, primarily because of the shipping. Because they are ceramic, they have to be packaged a certain way, a lot of bubble wrap and whatnot, to make sure that they do not chip or break in shipping. And ceramic is so much heavier than resin. So the cost of shipping ceramic coasters was just so much greater. And as I was trying to begin to focus a little more on making money, making a profit, it's like, where can I cut my costs? And I looked at my shipping costs and they were so high because these are so heavy. Um, but there's the yellow and we'll let that dry so I can do the other side. And then since we have the pink here, I'm gonna go ahead and do this other one <clears throat> with the pink. Ooh, that's bright. That's a pinker pink. think I like well and actually this pink is not cooperating I don't think it oh here it comes there it is oh that's a bright that's a bright pink that's almost a fluorescent the orange and see where I was holding it that spot where my finger was yeah you got to let these sides dry before you can do the rest <clears throat> Do not be in a hurry with your work. Okay, so now to do the other pink. This pink is really much brighter then what I want, it's almost, it's almost fluorescent. Um, I don't like the pink, but we're gonna use it anyway. This set of art skills markers, I actually purchased at uh, Sam's Club at one of the big box stores and they really go on really nicely and the good thing about this for what I'm doing is that the tip is a broad tip marker it's not a fine tip so you don't have to make like 500 strokes to get the color on here And I'll give these about an hour to dry and then we will seal them in resin. Okay, these need to be taped on the back in order for us to apply the resin. I'm big on recycling, so I am using some already used 
uh, painter's tape that I have. And this is just so when we add the resin, mm, everything cleans up nicely. And we are taping the backs of these so that when we put the resin on, the cleanup is easier. Any drips that are on the bottom will be on the tape and not actually on the tile. Okay, so to show you the two ways that I have finished these, one is to just spray this with the Rust-Oleum uh, Ultra Clear Gloss Protector. And then I'll come back in about uh, 15 minutes and spray a second coat on that. You can see that the sun, the sun has moved. I came out first thing this morning. I came out first thing this morning to put the first coat of um, Rust-Oleum gloss on here. And uh, you can see that the sun has moved. But before I put that other coat on, let me just let you see how pretty this really, I don't know if the camera can catch the beauty, the iridescence on that. That is absolutely gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Let me see if I turn it up. Let's get another coat of gloss on here. And also make sure when you're doing when you're spraying it that you go around the side. But there we go. We're going to mix 40 milliliters of resin to seal these and so again I always mark on my uh, container that way there's never an error in my mixing. So we're doing 20 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 20 milliliters of the Part A resin. Different brands of resin have different um, different brands of resin have different mixing ratios and uh, different mixing times. Of course, I always remind you I'm using CraftSmart, and I use CraftSmart because of the discounts that I get at Michaels. And we are a one-to-one -one mix ratio, and it says should mix for a minimum of five minutes. So we're going to turn on the timer. So we're turning on our timer for five minutes.
Okay, so our resin is mixed. And so we need to just get these over here. When I thought about, <clears throat> as I said, this all came about because I was cleaning. <clears throat> as I said, I uh, decided to do these um, because I got my new mat and I was rearranging my workspace and came across these ceramic coasters and decided, oh, that would be nice uh, for me to demonstrate. And again, the white space on here is if you are doing these as a Mother's Day gift, then take your Cricut, um, whatever machine you have, cut the names out in vinyl, put the names in that white space. That's what that's for. So we're just going to pour resin onto these. Take our little palette knife. And as opposed to using the spray, I took the one tile out back and sprayed it with the gloss. Um, the resin is more heat resistant. The gloss varnish is not really for heat. And then you want to make sure that you take your palette knife and go along the edges. When you heat the resin with the heat gun to get rid of the air bubbles, the resin is going to spread and some of it is going to run over the edges anyway. But you want to make sure that you do your edges. And one other thing, when you are um, spreading this, be careful not to scratch the surface because you will mess up your design. I did this one time and I ran the palette knife too deep and it just scraped all of my ink up and there was nothing I could do about it at that point because if I tried to wipe the resin off, everything got messed up. So 40 milliliters is basically 10 milliliters per beverage coaster. And then you can go back and see any spots that you missed, like right there on that corner, right there on that corner, right there on that corner. Add a drop right there. Spot right there. And then you can just run your palette knife or your stir stick along the bottom to kind of scoop up any drips. And that 
to this. And we will cover these and allow them to cure the afternoon. Okay, uh, I'm outside and I'm picking this up. This is dry. And so what we're going to do now is just take the tape off the back. This was tape because I thought I was doing it in resin. We'll take the tape off the back. And then instead of having the back look plain like that, what I do is I then I am using the Rust-Oleum, again 2X, I love this stuff, uh, in magenta and we're just going to put a very light spray of magenta on the back of that. So when someone goes, if you're selling this, when they receive it and they turn it over, the back is finished. So we're going to let that dry and while that's drying i'm gonna go in and check on the ones that i covered in resin this morning okay i am back let's take the cover off and oh those are beautiful those are beautiful oh yeah that's nice so they are dry and so what we have to do now is take the tape off that it oops I've got a little Ooh, I missed a spot right on this edge. I'm going to have to go back and touch this up. I missed a spot on that edge. Yikes. If you wind up with um, any pieces like this where the resin, oh, well, actually, that came up. Take that back. That came up too. If you have any spots where the resin leaked or seeped underneath, the tape or you wind up with like a little bubble there, just heat it with your heat gun. Just heat it and just take a razor blade and just peel it up. little bit of resin right there and that seam let's see if we can get rid of that okay and so I'm always talking about how you finish while that in and of itself is very pretty that's attractive 
and when you put it in the light you can really see um, the, the uh, pearlescent color but you don't want to give it to somebody with the back looking like that so what we're going to do is go out back and we're just going to spray these I have already sprayed the back of this one, the one that we um, sealed with the spray, the gloss clear spray, so we're going to set that aside. It's dry, of course, on the front and on the back, but if you received it and you turned it over, that's so much nicer. You would much rather receive something that looked like that rather than something that looked like that. So that's what we're going to do now is just spray the backs of these other three. And even though the, um, the colors on these, like the color on that is yellow, the color on that one is orange, I do not have paints in all of these different colors, but I have paint, so we're going to spray the backs of these pink. Again, our Rust-Oleum Magenta. And this doesn't have to be a heavy spray. This is just, again, the way you finish your stuff. You want when people, if they happen to turn it over, that it looks as good on the back as it does on the front. So there we go. Oops. And so we'll, we'll just leave these We'll just leave these out here to dry, and when I bring them in, I'll put the rubber bumps on. These were outside. They were sprayed on the back for a nice finish. Uh, one thing I want to point out, I painted the edge of this in yellow, but when I sprayed, I sprayed in pink, and so you've got a pink overspray on this side. So the easiest way to handle that is to take some acetone, some nail polish remover, squirt it on there, and I'll show you that paint will rub right off. And then you'll still have your yellow. right same with this one the edges on this one are orange but then we have that pink overspray on this side now actually you could almost leave it but if it were me and I picked it up I would be wondering why one side is like totally different color from the other that that would bother me and so just some acetone to wipe that off that one's fine and that one's fine. So okay, so the last thing that we need to do is our 3M rubber bumps. And we're just going to put four on these. And again, the rubber bumps not only protect your furniture from being scratched or, or marred, but because these are rubber, they are non-skid. So when you put this on the table, they're not going anywhere. So let's do... Okay, so let's get a couple of pictures taken and uh, we will call this done. <laughs>